when you look at the title, the first thing people ask me is, aren't NFTs already on chain? Well, the thing is, yes, non-fungible tokens are on chain, but we're only, talking, we're only talking about the token side. There's actually two sides to what an NFT is, right? So one side is you have the token, and the other side is you have the asset which the token represents. Now let's break this down further. Let's talk about these two things. So what are NFT tokens? NFT tokens are, they are on chain on Solana, which is why they could be traded. They have a history. Uh, they could be bought and sold. The second one is they are non-fungible, which is why they're NFTs. The third one is they are a unique SOL address, so they could be found, they could be interacted with. The fourth one is, and this is very important, we will come back to this later, it uses the Metaplex standard. The fifth one is it has a link pointing to an exterior asset. And what are the assets? Well, back then, in, you know, during the hype phase of NFTs, Assets can be anything, you know, NFTs could represent anything. It could be a house, it could be a car, it could be, you know, expensive Pokemon cards. But let's not kid ourselves, majority of NFTs right now are just JPEGs. And they are located off-chain, so these digital assets are stored off-chain, either in another chain or in a centralized server. So why is this important? Let's go back to 2021. So 2021 was the year that the limited collectible NFTs went mainstream. Now, what's the difference between this and the previous NFTs? See, the previous NFTs, we had them unlimited. You know, you had CryptoKitties, you had Axie Infinity. You could breed and create as many of these. The problem is it doesn't accrue value. Because of the limitation of the NFTs, it, creates now, it now creates accrued value because of speculation. Now we have the digital art frenzy. Now in 2021, we entered the era of 10,000 supply collectibles. The high value trading volume and price of these assets create the, put NFTs under mainstream scrutiny. Now what does this mean? It means that for the first time ever, NFTs were treated as digital art that can match traditional art. And then we see headlines like this. Your million dollar NFT can break tomorrow if you're not careful. And more recently, we saw this tweet by Elon, which went, made the rounds. You know, Elon criticizes that NFTs are just URLs, and you should at least encode the JPEG in the blockchain. So here we are today. So here comes the FUD, you know. People started uh, scrutinizing what NFTs actually are, because again, they're worth so much more now, and people are collecting them. So they started uh, contrasting them with the price of physical fine art, but the difference is they're digital art. So those uh, websites like these that are looking under the hood saw that NFT images are not even on chain. All you're actually buying is just a link to an off-chain object, right? So let's read the headline here. So you could see the, if you open up the 69 million NFT, which was sold by Beeple, you could see that the, the artwork isn't even there, right? So this was the FUD that we saw in 2021. This is the reason why we want to put NFTs on chain. So the number one uh, criticism is usually all you own is a link to an image somewhere. The art is even on chain. So how did NFTs solve this problem? To understand this, we have to look at Ethereum because they're the first ones who solved the on-chain problem. So let's look at a, a project called uh, Autoglyphs. They're a good example. So they are one of the early on-chain NFTs and the way they did it was quite simple. See, Autoglyphs, are images that are made out of text characters, right? So all they had to do was store each and every symbol into the NFT and the instructions on how to assemble them. It's simple, it works, but it can't be used for other types of images, right? Let's look at a better example, which is one of the most popular NFTs of all time, which is CryptoPunks. So to understand why they went on chain, let's first understand what they were before they were on chain, right? Back in 2017, they minted. When they minted, all that was stored on the NFT was actually the hash of the image. You had to go to the founder's website, you had to go to their GitHub, you had to download this image, you had to compare the hash, which proves that it's the correct image, to the hash that is stored on chain. Again, this works. You could verify that this is the image that you own, but if that image disappears, you cannot recreate the image just from the hash. 
So back in 2021, they decided to put all Ethereum CryptoPunks on chain. And how did they do it? Uh, simple. They stored them on chain as SVG files. SVG files stand for Scalable Vector Graphics. They're a great standard for putting uh, pixel art on chain because they can be scaled to any size, right? So this new contract is a brand new contract. It is not connected to their initial minting contract. And they spent about 75 million gas fees to put all of these NFTs assets on chain. Now, I don't know about the exact conversion, but uh, if you look at the contract, it's about, they spent around uh, four ETH at uh, $3,000 per Ethereum, so it should be around like $12,000. So now, uh, you might be asking, why am I talking about Ethereum NFTs, right, in a Solana conference? Well, the reason is because there weren't any on-chain NFTs on Solana until I put them there. And that is my story, why I decided to put NFTs on-chain on Solana. So back in December 2022, I launched Blockrons, which is the first on-chain NFTs on Solana. So how is this possible? It is same as CryptoPunks, done by storing the images as SVG strings inside the Solana accounts. So for you guys that are not developers, what are strings? So strings are just essentially a really long line of text which can be converted back to an image. So in this storage system, each image is actually stored to a separate Solana account. So we can trace back where the image is stored, and they are each unique. So the important question is, how much does it cost to put these images on chain? For simple pixel art, it's quite cheap, actually. So 10 KB pixel art, which, which can fit uh, SMBs. You could fit uh, block drones, of course, tensorians. TFF, you can fit them in under 10 KB. It only costs 0.07 sol, which is quite affordable. However, if you scale it to a high resolution image, it now becomes 70 sol for 10 MB. So if you have a, a well-known artist putting a high resolution image on chain, it becomes quite expensive. But there is a caveat to this. See, in Ethereum and Bitcoin, you have to pay it in gas fees. So you actually burn the amount that you're paying for. But in Solana, this is actually rent. So rent can be reclaimed. So therefore, you could have a high resolution image, you can put it on chain for 70 sol, and that creates a floor price of 70 sol for that image. Because when you trade it, whoever receives the image can now burn the image for 70 sol back. And that is the advantage of the cost of putting NFTs on chain on Solana. Because even if the cost is high, you can actually retrieve it back. So it helps because we now have a reason to have premium NFTs, right? So these NFTs can be like the Rolexes of Solana. It costs more to put it on chain, but it also has more intrinsic value. So what's actually inside these Solana accounts? So if you open up a Solana account containing a Blockron or any of the on-chain images, this is how it looks like. It's quite complex, but uh, the reason why it looks like this is because first it has to be plain text readable, so it can be read by uh, programs, other programs like wallets or like uh, marketplaces. And we also use a URL trick, a data S SVG trick, so we can now store the image directly into the JSON, because normally you would need two accounts, one for the JSON and one for the image object. But using this trick, we can store it in one Solana account. So now we can verify that the images and the metadata are permanently stored inside Solana accounts. However, we go through another problem. That is, how do you now connect the token and the asset together, right? So you have a token, which uh, is tradable, and you have the asset, which is stored in a separate Solana account. But how do you connect them? The simple solution is to write in the token the Solana account that contains the asset. It's simple, right? But the problem is, again, we go back to the Metaplex standard. The Metaplex standard does not allow you to actually put a Solana address there. You can, but it will break composability. So wallets and marketplaces will not be able to see your image. Your image would display as blank. Your NFT would have no title, it would have no name, it would have no traits. That is the current problem with using one standard. And the reason for that is because the link, which is uh, here in the URI field of the metadata account of Metaplex, can only fit 200 bytes. It can't fit the, the entire JSON in one go. Again, you can put a Solana account there, but it can't read it. So uh, how do we solve this problem? Well, we kind of have to do it half and half. The solution is to, well, uh, you'll see. The solution is we could still point it to an old AR Weave rank, and this is because uh, we need the wallets and the marketplaces to read the NFT, to read the traits, to read the images. 
However, what we can do is we can actually use a dummy URL to append the Solana account at the end file of the URI. The reason we do this is so we can connect the Solana account into the token. So now the Solana account is stored inside a token. We can retrieve the images from the account. Ergo, in all practical purposes, we have an on-chain NFT. So talking about the other projects of Solana, I'd like to talk about the future of on-chain NFTs. Uh, we have a few other projects that have done on-chain, aside from block runs. One of them is Hyperglyphs. So Hyperglyphs is actually a Solana implementation of the Autoglyphs. It is done by the talented Sushi-san. He built it about roughly one month after block runs. He launched it. It's a generative collection. And uh, the other one is uh, called Cold Canvas. It's a project by Exchange Art. And what they do is uh, it's a generative art platform. However, they store the entire code on chain. What you can do is you could actually read that code and then using uh, the special code which represents your image, you could regenerate the image using the code. So in all practical purposes, it is also on chain. The last project is uh, Libreplex, which is uh, done by the talented Neft. And uh, it's a community-made open source NFT protocol. And they're hoping to actually build an entire new standard that can read and write NFTs directly on chain. They're calling it inscriptions, which is uh, similar to ordinals inscriptions. I'm not a big fan of the terminology because it's tied too much to ordinals. However, uh, to get people into it, we have to use you know, relatable terms. So inscription, in this context, it actually works. So yeah, if you're interested in on-chain NFTs, please check out Blockruns. It is my art project. I do one of ones. I, I draw them. I put them on chain. Uh, we've done 50, and we've got 50 more, and we do auctions every week. So thank you for listening to my talk.